Thank you for the invitation. I, uh, I have to speak in, in English, which is not very easy for me, but uh, I made a PowerPoint so you can read a, a part of my expose. The, the idea is social regression as a way out of a crisis. And the first question is... Uh, I, I, <coughs> next, please. <coughs> The, the, the first question is, uh, economically illiterate policies or neoliberal shock therapy? It, it's a, a question, the question is, everybody or almost everybody thinks that the European policies are absurd and counterproductive. So why do they maintain these, these kinds of policies? So the first, the first element is to understand the, the free level debt. Next, please. Uh, which is, in the first place in Europe, a debt crisis which does not take place in other parts of the, of the world. So the idea, fundamentally, is the, the following one. During the, the period before the crisis, the financial crisis, there has been a, an accumulation of uh, indebtedness, uh, of uh, financial capital, which can be interpreted in terms of the drawing rights on uh, the surplus value. That means you have right to take a part of the wealth produced uh, with your financial assets. And the crisis is a devaluation of these rights and the, the problem with the, 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 the issue of this crisis and who is going to take the losses of the, the drawing rights. And the, the fundamental idea is that you, you can't have more rights on the wealth that, than the wealth that, that you have produced. And the idea, in and, and re, re, very simple terms, is uh, these rights are all, uh, today guaranteed by the austerity policies. The, the fundamental idea of the austerity policies is to guarantee the, the rights that should be devaluated. For instance, Dominique Stroskan, which we, who was a, a brilliant econo French economist, said one day the banks and the finance in general terms have to take their losses. They don't want to and then translate their losses to the people. That's, the, that's the, the, the fundamental point of the debt crisis. The second level of the, of the crisis is a crisis specific. The, it is the next uh, next uh, slide. Is the a crisis of the uh, euro system? What I call the euro system, which is specific to the, the to the euro. And and, and here I, I want to to stress on the, the logic the logic of austerity. The analysis say that. All the, the, the crisis in Europe comes from uh, a loss of competitiveness, competitiveness from the South uh, countries, Greece, Spain, Ireland, which is not really in the South, but economically uh, is part of this uh, uh, group, Italy, Portugal. And the, the, the policies that are uh, the way today uh, are equivalent to what they call an internal devaluation because you can't devaluate uh, your money so you have to make an internal devaluation that means uh, a lowering, uh, a freezing <coughs> at, at the base of, of the wages to re-establish the competitiveness of these countries. And I, I want, the first thing I want to show is that is wrong because the, the idea in, in general terms, it, it is wrong because the wage share uh, in different countries, on the next slide, show that in every country, the main countries, but I, I could uh, enlarge a number of countries, the wage share is, in, uh, is constant uh, before the crisis or is, is going down, is, uh, is slowing down. So the idea is, if there has been too too much wage, too too, too much wages, uh, uh, too strong rise in wages, you should have seen a wage share rising. 
since they are constant or uh, going down, it means that this explanation uh, is not the right explanation of a different uh, of a different evolution between the the countries. On the next slide, you can see that there is no link between the evolution of shares uh, and the change in the current account balance. It means you have two groups of, uh, of, of countries, very differentiated. Between uh, two, 2009 and 2012, the, the cost, the labor unitary cost of uh, some countries and of the other countries, the South countries, which are uh, in uh, upside, they, they, they are, they are, they, they, there is no link between the evolution of the labor unitary cost and the current uh, uh, load. So the, the, this, the, the idea, the less wages, does not lead to more competitiveness. And in the next. Uh, uh, in the next slide, you see that uh, the, this link does not explain uh, the, the evolution in the trade deficit because the, the, the illusion is the, the following one. The, some countries, Greece, Spain, Ireland, Portugal, have uh, uh, less uh, uh, current account balance deficit because, not because they are more competitive, but because of a recession. The idea is they, they, they have better trade balance or less deficit, not because they, they, low, they have lowered their wages and gained in competitiveness, but because of a recession, which means less imports. So the, the, the trade balance are equilibrated on the in the right, in the wrong way, as it not by more exports, but by more imports, which come from the recession. So, in the next slide, I can show uh, the third, the third level of the crisis, which is also a crisis more profound of uh, the, the capitalist profitability. So, we, here we can see, we can see that the the profit rate which is a, a good uh, indicator of uh, good health of capitalism, was rising during all the period uh, before the crisis, and that it, 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 is, it is going on with the crisis, but in a different way in the different parts of the Eurozone, uh, in the north uh, and in France, it is going down and in the south too, but not in the in the same proportion. And there, there has been a, a, a kind of restoration, partly uh, in, in part in the north country and, and especially in, in, in German in, in Germany. So I, I I am going to to be a little more detailed on, on this uh, on this relationship and. Uh, I would like to explain the, what I call the dialectic of the crisis in three, uh, in, in the next slide, in three steps. Or th the first time, it seems to be absurd. And it, it's really important to see, to, to, re to see this point. So it's a little com complicated, because, but I, I, I show that uh, here, here, in, in the abscesses, we have the uh, fiscal austerity. And so if you go to the left, you see more fiscal austerity, uh, more austerity in, uh, in, in each country. On the first curve, you see the correlation with the debt. And so what you see is that when in the country, for instance, Greece here, There has been a strong fiscal austerity, but the debt in, in, in percentage of the GDP has right risen. And when in uh, Germany or Austria or Finland, the, the fiscal austerity was not so important, and the debt uh, has not uh, risen, has stayed more or less the same proportion of the GDP. So 
This is absurd. You want to uh, reduce the, the debt, the public debt, by fiscal austerity, and the result you obtain is more debt, more public debt. So this is the first absurdity. The second curve, no, it, it's on the, the same on, on the same slide. The second curve is that when you make more fiscal austerity, you get more recession, less growth. It's the, the, the red curve. And here again, you see the Greece, which lo lost much, uh, a great part of growth, and Germany and other countries are the opposite, where, with less austerity, but more growth. So it, it's the, the, the vicious circle of austerity. You make fiscal austerity, you get less growth, you get less uh, you, you get more debt, more public debt, uh, and, and the, this is the absurdity of, uh, of, uh, of the policies in Europe. This, this is the, the first time. But second time, and all the question is to is why they are uh, putting these this policies if ev almost everyone knows Nobel prizes in economists who, who are not. Uh, anti-capitalist or heterodox, we say it's an absurdity. So the, the, the question is why? And the, the, the second time, you, you see that it is functional from the point of view of capitalism, which op, uh, main objective is to restore uh, its rentability, to restore the profit share. And you see that it works because you have two new correlations, more fiscal austerity means more recession, so more unemployment. It, it's a, a very, very strong correlation. And the, the second correlation is more fiscal austerity, the, the, the red curve, see, means more profit, more profit share uh, in, in the different countries. So apparently the idea is, okay, the, the, the objective of reducing public debt and public deficit doesn't work, but another objective is working, that means the restoration of the profit rate. But there is a, f a third time, that's why I, I, I talk of uh, dialectics, it, it, it is that in general terms, less, grow, less growth means in the medium term, less, less profit. And that's the, the, the general contradiction of the, the European capitalists today. It's that the, there, there is a strong contradiction between two objectives, the restoration of profit rate, but the, the restoration of outlets of, of growth, of the possibility to realize the, 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 the surplus value. It's a, a very classical contradiction, but it... it, it uh, it permits an uh, understand why the, this is a, a contradictory, a deeply contradictory situation. And the, the, the understanding of the European Commission and, uh, assimilates uh, of this contradiction is in the, the next slide. It's uh, at the end of a report on the Greek uh, economy in uh, uh, 2012 on the National Reform Program and Stability Program for Greece, they say, okay, in the first time, it is recession, it is social regression, it is unemployment, but nevertheless, this is important, <laughs> the, the, the word is important, it is expected, I, I'm going to read it, that the structural reforms, the structural reforms, I, I, I will talk of, of them later, particularly was in the labor market, the liberalization of several sectors in a, no, a number of measures to improve the business of the environment should help promote competition, spur productivity, increase employment, and reduce production costs, thus contributing to an increase in employment and limiting poverty and social exclusion in the medium term. So this is their, their thinking. We, we are going to make a, a, a real shock but with more competitiveness, more growth, 
in the end, we 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 get uh, 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 good results again. Uh, employment again, uh, unemployment, so, what they call social exclusion, with which maybe it's a name for precarious. So next, we. We, we need to see the, the combined effects of crisis and structural reforms. I, I, I will go quickly because it's very well known. But uh, on, the, on this slide you see the effect of the absurd policies. It is the, what the, the economists call the double dip in GDP, but, but we, we can see the, the, the same double dip in uh, um, um, employment. First, employment is rising, the crisis employment uh, are, are, are destroyed, but on 2010, more or less, there is a little uh, growth, growth, more growth because the, all, all the, the, the fiscal policy was, was not, was, was, the, the fiscal austerity did not really begin at this time, so there was a little uh, more growth, a little more employment, and the double dip uh, means that once again you are falling in terms of growth, in terms of uh, employment, and this is a, a very, this is a, a situation which is very specific to Europe and which comes from the specifically absurd policies. We, you, you don't have the same, uh, the same scheme. Uh, for instance, in uh, in uh, in the United States, because the, the I don't mean that, that everything is perfect in the United States, but there is a, a specific effect of the austerity policies. You can see this on the unemployment, unemployment rate on the next slide, uh, which where you see the same the, the same profile, uh, an unemployment rate was. Uh, going down before the crisis, and you you see this little st stabilization, but with which can't last with the uh, austerity policies. And uh, if you look a little more in detail, I, I, I'm using a work by Ronald Jensen, we, which is working with the uh, trade union, uh, European Trade Union Congress, the, the Confederation. The, Oh, Congress. I don't know. Uh, on the next slide, it's a more detailed uh, balance, and uh, you you <coughs> see, especially the rise, the very very uh, important rise on the part-time employment. The full-time employment is lower than before the crisis, and the GDP is lower than at the beginning of, of, of a crisis. So the, the one of the main trends in employment, there are many, but one of the main ones is the uh, translation from full-time employment to part-time employment in, the, in Europe, in the Eurozone, and uh, in the European Union in, in general. And here you can see the specific targets, the specific fraction of the population, which are on the next slide, you see different uh, way of, of looking at that. Unemployment is especially striking two two fractions of the population, the young people and the low qualified uh, 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 employment jobs. In, in, the, in general terms in the European Union. Uh, the part-time, on the next slide, you see that the women are especially, of course, uh, concerned, but it is rising uh, over time in the, in the case of young people and low, 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 low skilled or low educated people. So, uh, uh, we are, we are going to, to, to see what, what are the structural reforms, because there is a mix between the effects of the crisis, the effects of a specific uh, euro crisis, and the effects uh, of the structural reforms, which are uh, uh, put in, 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 act, in action by the, the European Commission and the, the governments with, which follow the European Commission. 
First, there is a fiscal adjustment with two rules, two principles, cuts in public spending, cuts in public sector wages, and if you have to increase the, the taxes, please choose the unfair taxes like the uh, VAT, uh, and, and this is a, a general scheme, a general uh, idea in the, the, the policy which are uh, in Europe today. But there are more, the circular reforms are, are, have two objectives, two, two more profound objectives, which the, f the first one is to shrink the welfare state. So you have reduction uh, of un unemployment benefits, reduction of social benefits in general terms, and the, the privatization of public pension schemes uh, in, in the countries. And there is a, a very important literature of uh, bodies like the European Commission of uh, uh, OCD, uh, OCD uh, or ACD, <laughs> excuse me, uh, on the IMF on, on to, to rationalize all these structural reforms uh, concerning all which is pensions, uh, uh, benefits, social benefits. And the second big uh, objective concerns the labor market flexibility. So you have the reduction of minimum wages. One document talks, for, for instance, this is a good expression of a minimal minimum wage, wage if you can't suppress it totally. The weakening of bargaining, of collective bargaining institutions, and the deregulating labor laws. And I, I could take, for, for example, in France, uh, which has a, a, a left-wing government, we could take a, every, any part all these measures and see that they are, uh, they are applicated or they are, uh, for instance, on, on deregulating labor laws, there has been uh, an agreement be, be, between a part of the trade unions and uh, the enterprises, which are, are changing very deeply the, the, the labor laws in, in, in France. So, how, how much time I have left? So, so I come to, to, the, to, to some ideas on the alternative. On the, it's a general, well, it's a general, um, an alternate, a coherent alternative must combine three objectives: the energy sobriety for the, the, the climate change, rebalancing the world. Uh, for rebalancing the world with the idea of more self-centered economies and giving a priority to, to social needs uh, with uh, an objective, let's say, of decommodification, let's say, uh, to take the, the expression of Polony, by an end which is, uh, which, uh, is a, a new distribution of income. On on the, uh, the next slide, I, I put the, the main objectives of which could be a social democratic program uh, for re regulating the capitalism. So the, the idea of social democrat uh, theory w could be another distribution of income, the reduction of working time, which is a very important thing, this fiscal reform to get this, to obtain this new distribution of income, a renewal, renewal of public intervention and maybe more growth. So I, I won't discuss this in, in detail, but I, I, I will try to show that these good ideas are not compatible with what I call social liberalism and especially with the idea of uh, fiscal austerity. You can't make, f and we have good examples uh, uh, in European countries, especially in France, for instance, you can't uh, say we are going to reduce the, the public deficit very quickly 
and uh, get more growth or make a, uh, uh, really re uh, reduce the working time and so on. There is a, 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 a deep incompatibility between these two, uh, these two, these orientations. And maybe on the next slide, I, I, I would try to to, in, to stress two principles for an alternative. The first one is very important. It's a little abstract, but the, the first one is the, the two definitions, two possible definitions of efficiency. The first one is in the market efficiency, which, which has a very strong ideological uh, strength on, on the, the, the way of thinking of the things. For instance, one of the main arguments for shrinking the welfare state it is to say that it is not efficient. That we, we, it would be more efficient to privatize a, a part of, the, uh, of its functions. So, the, the, you, you have to make the distinction between market efficiency, which, is, which maximizes the vitality of the profit, and social efficiency, which is the maximization of welfare. And so, it, it's very important because it's two kinds of uh, economic uh, calculations and two kinds of uh, social organizations. So, I, 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 I leave it because I'm a little late. I'm very late. So, uh, I, I, I will deal with, uh, on the next slide, with the idea of a European strategy. We have a problem between two risks. One is uh, the risk of an impossible choice between leaving the euro or waiting for the, the advent of a, a good Europe. So we have to think in terms of a transitional program. We, with a double, we have to think and make a double rupture between, with the, the, this logic of finance-led capitalism and with the logic of what I call Euro-liberalism. So I, I, I will give very quickly some examples uh, on the next slide. How to deal with a debt? So the, the, the main idea is at the bottom maybe. Uh, you, there is a, another problem, uh, another contradiction, which is a very deep contradiction. You can't deal with the, you can't deal with the ecological transition with the f fiscal austerity. There, there is a very deep contradiction, because to to face the to the ecological transition, you have to make investments. You have to make public investments, and you can do it if you are on a on a way of, of fiscal austerity. This is maybe the, the main uh, contradiction. So uh, I go directly to the next line to explain, maybe because in terms of more political terms, what is the, the what could be this this strategy of rupture and what I call extinction. Extension. The idea is. The first idea is unilaterality. It's the idea you can't wait for the good Europe, so you have to make good decisions at the, uh, at the level of a country against the European laws. For instance, uh, maybe it's a, a good example, uh, is the possibility for the central bank to finance directly uh, the debt, the, 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 the public deficit in, in each country. It's totally uh, in opposition with the, the European laws, let's say, uh, like that, but uh, this is the way of escaping the pressure of the financial markets on the, the, the policy the decision that you, you can make in one country. In, we are in a system where uh, a government can't take a decision which is against what the financial markets want. Because if, they, if it does it immediately, it is, uh, it, it, it is going to face a rise in the in interest rates. So the, it's a main, the, the first condition for a, 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 a policy, a, a independent or autonomous policy, is to break this dependence 
uh, in relation with the financial markets, uh, with the, the for the, the financing of the uh, public uh, deficit. Uh, so, second point, if you take such a decision, and Cyprus may be a good example, you have to, to, to take uh, protection measures, uh, for instance, uh, control of capital, because you are going to, to have a, a, a flight of capital, which took place in Cyprus, in fact, because the controls of uh, the capital controls were, were not uh, very were not tight or strong enough. Uh, you, you take the political risk of breaking European Union rules because you you have the legitimate the legitimacy uh, of so you you can say what I do in my country. I propose it that for a new general rule in Europe. And it's, a, it's really it's, it's not the same thing that all the, the policies that are, uh, that are taking place, which are the, the competitiveness, which means that everyone tries to take employment to the other countries, which is a totally anti-cooperative uh, policy. Uh, if, you, if you want to become more competitive, it means that you are going to take market share on the other European countries. That's a way out of the crisis. And it's stupid because uh, uh, if one country can do it, all the countries can, cannot do it together. But if one country says, I put strong tax on capital incomes, uh, it, it, it is not against the other country, it's against capital, and it's a stronger decision if all the countries do the same. So it, it's maybe the idea to, 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 uh, to escape this contradiction between leaving the Euro or waiting for the good Europe, which is not going to, to come uh, easily. So, in conclusion, Yes. Maybe the, the 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 next not the next slide but the the, the, the last one. Yes. I, I I want just three last ideas on the difference between anti-capitalism or anti-liberalism, which is a debate which takes place in the in the left. The first idea, the first thesis, it that's really. What this crisis shows is, is that capitalism is not an, an, obstacle, an obstacle to a satisfaction of human needs and to the fight against climate change. So the real alternative is eco-socialism. In, in fact, the situation, the situation is, is very uh, dramatic because uh, the, all the, the way out of the crisis uh, from a social liberal point of view, are not really solutions to the crisis. You, from these policies, you can't, for instance, uh, wait for a, a real rise in uh, employment, the cre creation of, of, of jobs or, or, or a reduction. It, it, it means uh, uh, a deepening of all these trends uh, to precar precar general precariousness. Uh, and at today, the, is, is the second thesis, if you just want to be a real social democrat, you, you, you are almost immediately have, you almost immediately have to be an anti-capitalist. Because the idea today is that the, uh, the revenue for finance are not concerned by all the, the, the measures of the, these policies. No, no one, for instance, says, uh, everybody says we have to freeze or, or lower the wages, but no one says we have to uh, lower, really lower the, 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 for instance, the dividends for the, uh, for paid by, by the companies, which are at, at a very high level and which are at a uh, high, the, the same level than before the crisis, when the wages are, are going, the, the, the social spendings are going. Down. And the, the, third, the third idea is that that's, 
really a debate on what's the objective to regulate or to to overthrow the, the capitalism. But the idea it's a, a debate that which must be uh, which uh, must be uh, taken. Uh, in concrete terms, in the struggles against of resistance against the austerity measures, and in, in, the, in the building of an, an alternative, uh, an, alternate, an anti-capitalist alternative, it means for for instance, concretely, when when you you fight against the disagreement in France, uh, you you have to to. to to fight against it from the point of view of an alternative, uh, who, who, uh, which includes uh, a real uh, security, social security, uh, as we say in, in France, professional security for the workers, which is a, a new st statute for the workers, and, and which uh, uh, which contains, which have uh, uh, anti-capitalist uh, signification. Thank you, and sorry for my bad English. <laughs>